Hey, what's up guys? My name is Jerry, and in today's video, I'm going to be starting my spoiler vlog for Crest by Marissa Meyer. This is the third book in the Lunar Chronicles, which is this is actually my favorite book in the series. So I am super excited to be at this book. And I've only read this once before. This is a reread. If you see my other spoiler vlogs for the first two books in this series, you know that I'm rereading the series. <laughs> the first two books, um, Cinder and Scarlet, I have that was my third time reading reading those two books and for Crest and then Winter, which will be next month that I will read. This is my <laughs> this is gonna be my second time reading this. I've only read it once before, so I'm super excited to finally be rereading this book. Yeah. I'm also if you see again my other vlogs for the first two books in the series, you know them annotating these books. Oh, today is Friday, August 14th, 4 27 p.m. Yeah, so um that's I think that's all I really have to say. But yeah, I'm gonna be trying to like update as soon as I have like a thought while I'm reading. So yeah, so let's just hop into reading Crest. Okay, so it's not technically the next day because it's 12 1 a.m. Um, Saturday, August 15th. There you go, 12 1. And I'm gonna leave the air conditioner on because there's a party going on outside and the music is pretty loud and, you know, copyright. <laughs> uh, there's people yelling. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be better to deal with the AC sound than the music and having to figure out whatever. Anyways, Chris. Okay, I think, okay, I have a few annotations. So first off, Chris was like reading like the news or whatever, like on the net. <laughs> and apparently this one like civilian, <laughs> I guess, um, says like, oh, with the whole Prince Kai and, and Le Levana engagement, he's like, it's, it's gonna, it's not gonna be any more attacks, and then he also mentions like, okay, so he says, and besides, Queen Levana only wanted to rule the Eastern Commonwealth. Surely she would leave the rest of the Earth and Union alone. I <laughs> literally wrote, that is what you think. Because, what? She's not just gonna stop with the Eastern Commonwealth. She wants to take over the world. Like, that's just where she's starting. Um, also, Mistress Civil, the dramaturge. She's annoying. I, what did she say? She was like, uh, we would be satisfied once Earth is under lunar control. See? I was saying earlier, they're not gonna stop with just the Eastern Commonwealth. They want to take over the world, the, whole, the entire Earth. She's like, yeah. Um, you will be satisfied once Earth is under lunar control. Yeah, and I literally, I wrote for that, I was like, roll guys. Okay, and then the, uh, Sybil, while she goes to Cress's satellite, she collects a, she collects a blood sample from her, and I was like, oh, I remember that she was collecting blood samples from her, and, like, she's been doing it for, like, a long time. I couldn't, I couldn't remember why she was doing that and I'm pretty sure that they're using Cress's blood for the antidote for Letamosis. I'm not 100% sure but I think that's it. But again, not 100% sure. I also added in, oh, I just put a little flag, orange flag on the section where Cress is talking about all the different like crimes Thorn has committed and how 
um, for each situation he has like a reason behind why he did what he did and I know I remember that she does ask him about those things later on in the book so yeah I just put that there I also highlighted this section pink and if you have seen my cinder vlog which if you've gotten watching this I'm assuming you've watched my cinder vlogs and my scarlet vlogs but maybe not but yeah wait also pink means love so it could be like something like relationship wise is going on or it could mean it could just be something that I love so for this section Chris is just talking about <clears throat> okay so I put love um, just because the way she's talking about thorn is um, it's kind of cute so that's why I put it pink but it's also kind of sad because she's literally just waiting there she's basically just waiting for someone to come save her and she feels like it's gonna be thorn that's gonna come and save her like the last line she says is because if there was one thing Chris knew about heroes, it was that they could not resist a damsel in distress. And she was nothing if not in distress. But yeah, um, I don't know if I should read the whole section that I highlighted. But yeah, but like, that goes back to the, like, Thorne's criminal history. Um, and why she thinks that he's going to be the one to save her because, um, like she says, he was exactly the kind of hero Chris had been dreaming about her entire life. She, her entire life, she's been stuck in the satellite and she's been dreaming about somebody coming and saving her. So yeah, <clears throat> the way she talks about how Thorne is going to come, she feels like he's going to come and save her and they're going to have like this epic love story. It's on the cutesy side, but then again, it's sad because she's just waiting for someone to come and save her. But yeah, um, that's the part where I got up to I'm now on page 30 chapter 4 um I think I'm gonna read for a, a little bit more now I'm not 100% sure but yeah that's the update I have right now and I'll talk to you guys again later hey guys First off, I washed my hair. So that's why it's wet and I have a towel. Um, so it's 12-7, Sunday, August 16th. Yeah. And I'm reading Cress. And I just want to talk. Okay, so I'm up to the part where they're going to um, rescue Cress from her satellite and thorn is the one that goes and <laughs> i'm reading this and literally okay so sybil found out that Chris had been talking to cinder and that they were coming to rescue Chris. so they set up um sybil set up a trap to capture cinder but it was thorn the one who's who goes into the into Chris's satellite to get Cress and basically Sybil is um, reveals herself and obviously Thorne is in this predicament now where he's on this satellite and Sybil is telling him like yeah you're under arrest for you know working with Cinder and then they're gonna like they're like we're gonna go get Cinder now too and his fun is so freaking funny because in this weird predicament he could they could he has no way of communicating with everybody else who, who's in the rampion and he's like making jokes um like Sybil mentioned mentions jason her her guard um <laughs> and then eventually when he sees jason he's like ah you're jason i thought she was making you up and then just now, um, they say, Sybil is like, consider yourself lucky that it will be quick. And Thorne is like, I always consider myself lucky. I'm like, Thorne, like, this is not, this not, this is not the time for jokes. But yeah, I decided to mention that because that was funny. Because I'm like, that's just Thorne. That's Thorne for you. Anyways, I'm going to keep on reading. Okay, 
What time is it? It's almost 1. It's 12.48 a.m. And uh, I wanted to keep reading, but I had to work in the morning. So I had to stop myself. And again, I forgot. <laughs> you know, I just read Scarlet. Not that long ago. It's been a, almost two weeks. I forgot how easy it is to just like fall into this world and not want to leave. Okay, so I think I have like three things I have to say. First off, I forgot that Jason actually ends up shooting Sybil. And I remember that once Sybil and Jason trying to go into the rap rampion, that's when they captured captured Scarlet, but I can't remember how that happened. So yeah, it was Jason after the whole like uh, Wolf was injured and Sybil got shot by Jason. After all of that, Jason pretended to be Scarlet, like using his lunar ability. And yes, yeah, so and that's how he tricked Cinder into thinking he was Scarlet to take him back to take him into the Rampion. Yeah, so I forgot that happened and that that's how Sybil ended up with Scarlet and how Scarlet ends up on Luna. That was two things I forgot. And then I read the part where Cress's satellite with Cress and Thorn in it was falling down to Earth and they had to try to set off the parachute so, so they won't die. So yeah, so they um, it works, they crash to Earth, but Thorn ends up hitting his head, which causes him to lose his sight. And I feel like Cress is like one of the four books in the Lunar Chronicles has one of the most amount of similarities similarities to the actual story that's inspired by so this being R rapunzel and if you guys don't know in the original tale of rapunzel the witch that's keeping rapunzel in the tower she okay so the prince he's like on a horse and then she ends up like doing something where he ends up falling on um in a thorn thorn bush which again thorn <laughs> um that's why his last name is thorn in this book that's one and so yeah so he falls into a thorn bush and he ends up losing his sight so that's why in crest that's why thorn ends up losing his sight because in the original tale the prince loses his sight and also which in the original tale of rapunzel she sends Cress. <laughs> she sends rapunzel rapunzel to the desert and i haven't read this part yet but I know that they, when they, when they land on the satellite, um, they land and they land in the desert, and that's why that happened. <laughs> so yeah. And then I'm pretty sure there's like more things are that's really similar or like reminiscent of the original tale of Rapunzel. One of them, yep. Yeah, one of them. One of the main things happens right at the end of this book. Um, which I, I thought was just like such a good connection but I'll talk about that more once I actually read it which will be at the end of this book pretty sure I pretty sure it was the end of this book but yeah that's all I really have to say for now again I'm having so much fun reading the series and I can't wait to read some more but I can't right now because I have to go to sleep soon so yeah, I'll talk to you guys again um, whenever I pick this up again and continue reading. Hey guys, so it is 12.05 on Wednesday, August 19th. 6 now. Basically, this is gonna be a quick wrap up. The wrap, not wrap up. Update. Yes. Caress 
I just got to page 168. I'm on chapter 20. I only read for an hour because I have to go to bed soon because I have to be at work in the morning. Also, I'm too late, lazy to get up to turn off the AC so you can hear that in the background. Anyways, um, I just read... I didn't read that much. So I read Cinder, Cinder, Wolf, Jason. They got to Africa. They found Dr. Erlen and Dr. Erlen is gonna help save Wolf because he's in really bad shape after the little fight battle that they had with Sybil. Okay, and then Thorn and Crest, they, they crash on Earth. They figured out that they're in desert and they figured out that they're most likely in Africa, which is the best situation because Cinder and Cinder, Wolf, and Jason are in Africa. They all landed in the same continent, at, at least. So they are now trekking through the desert, trying to find civilization, trying to find a way to contact the Rampion so they could meet up with Cinder and all of them again. Scarlet, we only got, I only read one chapter from her perspective. She's on a pod ship with Sybil. Sybil's injured. She talked to Lavana, but Sybil is controlling Scarlet to fly the pod ship to Luna. So Sybil apologized to Lavana because obviously she couldn't get Cinder. She couldn't capture her. I also got a chapter from Kai and he's planning the wedding that he's dreading. Oh, also, he had a meeting with, you know, all, the, all his advisors and the different, like, leaders from the different providence. And they mentioned, this. I think this only, they are talking about how hundreds of tiny spaceships, they could see, like, in the sky. They just popped out of nowhere. And they're trying to figure out if they were always there or if they all just popped out of nowhere um but i pretty sure i didn't realize this the first time i read this book but i honestly don't remember if i did notice it or not but i realize now that the reason why these spaceships all of a sudden all of a sudden popped up is because since cress's uh satellite crashed and it's destroyed and Cress is the one that was blocking the was blocking like everyone from Earth seeing the seeing the lunar spaceships. So she's not doing that anymore. She, so now everyone on Earth, like all these leaders, can see that there's a bunch of lunar spaceships. So yeah, so that's how that happened. But they're trying to figure it out. But obviously they don't know that this whole time was blocking the signal so they didn't know that those spaceships were there. Kai also talks to his wedding planner and the wedding planner is just talking to him and like um they're talking about getting escort droids yeah escort droids, droids for the wedding because that way they will have like other eyes to like See if like Lavana and the Lunars try to do something sketchy during the wedding, and um, this like this kind of sad scene, the conversation between the wedding planner and Kai because the wedding planner is talking about how she has a son that's only a year older than Kai, and she's thinking about like what he must be going through being this young and having to marry Lavana and all that comes with that you know running a country and everything so yeah she basically um tells him like to try to find something that will make him happy because not pretty much not a lot of good things are gonna, are gonna come if any i don't think anything at all is gonna come from marrying Lavana. so she's like try and find something um that you can do that will bring you you know joy or whatever and one of the things Kai says is, it's good advice. I don't know if I have the energy to be happy right now about anything. And I'm like, that's so sad. 
Because, like, yeah, he's really young, I think. He's probably, like, 17, 18. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, and he's, he has to run the country. He has to marry this person. Yeah. So, that's, that's pretty much where I'm up to. Yeah, that was the last thing I read. And I want to keep reading, but, again, like I said, I have to be at work in the morning. So, I can't. But I'll continue reading again tomorrow. Well, technically later today because it's already past midnight. Um, after I get home from work. I want to mention one more thing before I go. Which I completely forgot. Which, Because, you know, there's a retelling. So I like to mark down things that are similar to like the original tale that it's retelling. So obviously this one is Rapunzel. So this isn't like the actual tale. But it's similar to the... Disney movie Tangled and it's something really small but I marked it down because it's a similarity which is just um Chris was talking about how she doesn't have any shoes because they were talking about um how she should dress to go into the desert um her and Thorn and she mentions that she only has these dresses and she also mentioned that she doesn't have shoes and if you guys have seen Tangled you guys know that Rapunzel doesn't wear shoes so yeah so I marked that down and now I'm gonna go. Okay, so I'm laying here. <laughs> I'm reading. Obviously, Crest. And hopefully this camera angle isn't too bad. But I'm too I'm too comfortable to move. Um, 10 21 Thursday, August 20th. And oh, ugh, everything's falling. So I'm just reading this scene where Kai is talking to Thaumaturge Amory and about the lunar ships that are up in space are like really close to earth and he's trying Kai is talking to him like um like why are those ships there those old lunar ships crown lunar ships like what's going on there and it, Amory is being so freaking annoying and I'm like I can't like I can't stand <sighs> like I can't stand Amory. I don't know the way he was just talking to Kai was so freaking annoying. It was kinda like condescending. I don't know. It was just so freaking annoying and I'm like <laughs> I felt Kai's annoyance <laughs> like through what I was reading and I'm like, yeah, I feel you Kai like like, it's so freaking frustrating. Um, and one of the things that Kai says is, who said, how was it, how, oh, how was it that lunars didn't even have to use, use their mind powers and they still drove him mad every time he talked to them? I'm like, yeah. Because I just want to slap Avery, Amory, the, the whole time. He was talking because I'm just like, bro. Anyways, yeah. I'm okay breathing. Talk to you guys again later. Hey guys, so it's um Sunday, August 23rd, 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 um, 4.37 p.m. So I've been reading for like a little under 30 minutes obviously crest and i just had to stop okay so we ha um i like annotated like three things so i just put a flag um what I'm so we've gotten to the point where they're like in the desert still and they're like trekking on trying to get out of there and um crest has developed a fever and she like tells thorn i think i'm in love with you and then um, he says don't tell me it took you two whole days to realize that i must be losing my touch and then they just have like this whole conversation about um having to keep going even though she has a fever because if they didn't get up um because she has a fever she may never get up again yeah but then now they oh and also like want to like um like scenes or parts a lot of people talk about or like one of the like nice things that he does because she's talking about again she has a fever so it's a high chance that she could die from it so she's talking about like oh like oh great um 
like I finally got him get out of my satellite and I'm gonna die without ever being kissed and then he like just to like give her like some sort of encouragement um because she's like she's just like whatever like it's done and she's like she's just so tired and all she wants to do is just like keep like like rest and sleep me trying to get her to like keep moving um so she yeah she, she's like oh yeah i'm gonna die without ever being kissed so he tells her i promise i will not let you die without being kissed and yeah that comes into play later on so yeah, and it's, i think i feel like that's one of the things that um a lot of people like talk about um about this book is the whole um that promise that he gives her now they have found like other people in in the desert and then they're in a little oasis so then they're just talking to these new people that they met and the reason why i decided to do an update is because they're pretending to be married and they said that they were attacked and robbed two days ago so the people won't be suspicious of them they are pretending to be married um, so then one of the women in like that group is like um you're very young um she, okay so it is like you're very young the words sounded accusatory to christ's ears but the woman's face was kind um how long have you been married and then thorns is like oh um we're newly ones like this was supposed to be our honeymoon and then christ chimes in with and i'm not as young as i look and that just hit me because um if you guys don't know I'm 31 and all the time people look at me that you're like why are you lying <laughs> um so I feel like like I feel crass because she is she's like barely like she's like barely five feet I think she's really short and yeah I guess she has like a young face so I I, I feel her pain because sometimes like yeah it's fine and people think you're younger than you are but it's not fine when people assume that you're younger than you are and they treat you like you're like or in my case like a teenager or something that could be like very like annoying so i don't know i just like felt crest there because i'm like i feel you because i i get the same thing but yeah that's that's all I really had to say because that's literally the last thing that I read so I'm just gonna keep on reading and I'll update you guys again later okay I'm back it's been like a minute <laughs> but I just kept reading and literally the woman that they're talking to replies with you'll be grateful for that youthful that youthfulness someday and that's literally people always tell me <laughs> but they don't know the struggle of looking younger than you are and people treating you that way it could get real i'm telling you it could get really annoying yeah i'm, I'm going now <laughs> okay it's like five minutes later okay. i have the hiccups now great <laughs> i'm scared to talk now okay so i'm reading a cinder chapter now and cinder and jason go to the shop to get some supplies right some parts for the ship and they're talking to the lady who works in the shop and cinder and the lady just having like a normal conversation and just, um the lady just telling her like oh um she's like praising cinder right <clears throat> so then jason gets kind of annoyed so then he puts he kind of like throws the port screen at the lady and it's like these are the parts that we need and jason is currently wearing his um guard shirt and the lady says my son was also conscripted to become a guard for Lavana. Her eyes narrowed, but he was not so rude. And I was like, you tell him. But then, a little bit later, so I think Cinder is like, um, your son is a royal guard. <clears throat> and the lady says, no, no, he chose to kill himself rather than become one of her puppets. She flashed a glare at Jason and stood a little taller. And the Cinder's like, oh, I'm sorry. And Jason has the nerve to say, I guess he must not have cared about you very much. And I'm like, Jason. <laughs> just like Cinder. Cinder, she, oh, it just says Cinder Gas. Jason. I'm like, yo, like, seriously, Jason? Like, what has this lady done to you? Because I just, just see the obvious that you're being rude. But yeah, I just had to mention that. Because Jason. Seriously? 
I don't think winter. Um, I'm not gonna say that the whole. Maybe I'm not until like later, later. I'm not sure if it's in this book, but then it's probably in winter that they're like. Anyways, yeah, that's all I have to say. I'm gonna get back to reading. Okay, so it is now 11:30 on Sunday, August 23rd, and I'm just gonna do an update. Obviously, I'm crushed. Okay, so where did it leave off? Oh, I did want to mention that earlier I said something about Jason and Cinder getting parts for the ship, but that was and they were getting medical supplies for, for um, Thorn and Cress have, I think I said that they were with a group of people in the desert, but then now they're in a hotel and then Thorn, he went downstairs to gamble. Um, and Cress ends up seeing him with a girl. Oh, yes. Yeah, so Cress sees him with a girl, and she gets really upset about it. So then she ends up trying trying to go back into the room, but she left the key. So then one of the women that was with them that they found, um, they bumped into it in the desert. She like takes Cress outside, and. <clears throat> They pretty much kidnap her because they realize that Cress is the one that was in the satellite. They crashed in the desert and they know that she's a lunar shell and they're gonna go take her to Erlen. So, because he's like offering money. But what I wanted to mention is that after that we get a chapter from Thorne's perspective and he and it says there was a woman on Thorne's lap. Oh and <laughs> this is actually right when Quest sees this woman with Thorne. It says there was a woman on Thorne's lap. She was net drama beautiful with warm brown skin and full lips and hair that hung in dozens in dozens of long thin braids dyed various shades of blue she wore simple khaki shorts and a blousey top but somehow she made them look elegant if you read this before or like i'm assuming you've already read this the entire book if you're watching this um and you know that that's actually the body that he uses the android this woman is an android and this the reason why he was gambling and um, interacting with this android. Well, they, she's an escort, an escort droid. And we know, if you've read this, that the reason why he was interacting with this escort droid was because he was like, oh, this will make a good body for Aiko. So he was doing it for Aiko. He wasn't just like being an ass and like flirting or whatever with an escort droid. But then Cress doesn't know that it's an escort droid and she doesn't know why he's doing that. So it, it hurts her because, you know, she's like developed feelings for him. But we know that's Aiko. Well, body they will eventually become Eichel's. Then I highlighted a part where Thorn he ends up getting punched because he outs the man who owns the escort droid and like it says you know that's the escort droid. Um, he ends up getting punched and then one of the guys that was in like that group in the desert with them like saves him and they're just they're talking and then one of the things Thorne says is that's true I am rather attached to my nose I may be looking too much into this but Tangled which is you know Rapunzel came out before this book came out so I don't know <laughs> if that was a reference a, a tiny a small reference to Tangled where when um Flynn is always saying they just can't get my nose right. I may be looking too much into it, but that's where my mind went to when he says I'm rather attached to my nose. It's made me think of they just can't they just can't they just can't get my nose right. I don't know if I'm reaching too much, I probably am, but that's what 
made me think. Okay, then I highlighted in pink um, this part where Thorne is like starting to realize that they know that Crest is a lunar shell and they think that Thorne knows that she, <clears throat> that she, well, Thorne does know that she's a lunar shell, but they think that Thorne was taking her to, to suffer off. They didn't think that, you know, that, that they just think that he's, that he's trying to suffer off. So they're trying to like negotiate, this guy's trying to negotiate with Thorne um, to like sell Crest to them. And then he's like trying like to like not make it obvious that this co the conversation making him uncomfortable talking about selling Crest, who's you know a human. Well, she's a lunar, <clears throat> but still human. And he's like merchandise, um, business transaction. He attempted nonchalance, but his skin was crawling, and he found it difficult to set aside the memory of Chris's hand in his. I, so I just thought that was cute that he's like. Now you could tell like that he I think is starting to develop feelings for Cress or like at least like she has like yeah I guess like starting to develop feelings for her and he that he cares about her. So I thought it was cute. And then I also highlighted in green which is um good quotes for me. Green means good quotes. Um it says she was a girl, a living girl, smart and sweet and awkward and unusual and she was worth far more than they could ever realize. Yeah, because they were just offering him 20,000 units for her. So he's like, um, like, that's messed up. And, like, seriously, like, she's worth way more than that. But not, like, that she could be sold. But, like, um, and then also he, like, ends up. I think the guy was like, yeah, like, that's, that, that's a good, good amount for her. And Thorne is like, if you honestly believe that, said Thorne throwing the gun again then you really don't recognize the value then you really don't recognize true value when you see it and i also highlighted that in green because i was like yes born and then yeah guys i'm gonna mention um the last topic that i read it was just kai getting more information about he asked um the doctor um what the new doctor because you know erlen has gone so he asked her um to see Cinder's medical records so you could get just like a little bit more information about her and I like, he's just trying to piece everything together because he's really confused because he um cause he, he's been lied to he, he's really confused he doesn't know how to feel so he's just trying to get more information uh, so that's the last chapter I read and I'm stopping there for today because I have work tomorrow so yes so that's where I'm gonna leave off. I got to page 310, chapter 35, and I'm hoping to finish this by Wednesday night. So fingers crossed I can do it. Yeah. Hey guys, so I didn't read yesterday, which was Monday. It's now Tuesday, August 25th, 10 20 p.m. Okay, so I just wanted to come on here and do another i'm gonna do a small update hopefully this is actually a short update but um a little while ago i was reading press obviously because this vlog is a spoiler vlog for press and i'm not gonna go detail scene by scene about like what i've read but i'm just gonna mention like one scene because i want to mention two things okay the first thing i want to mention is that jason jason has a weird personality where it's just like, I don't know if you're joking or if you're serious. Because um, some of the things he's, he says, it's just like, I don't know. I don't know what it, I don't know how to pinpoint his personality and what they call it. But it's just like some of the things he says, I'm like, yo, Jason. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I'm not sure if you're just trying to be funny or if you like, if you're serious. <laughs> like, this is one part where he says, um, where it says, <clears throat> Jason's concern turned fast to annoyance. Your ship has some messed up priorities, you know that? Um, Aiko, my name is Aiko. If you don't stop calling me the ship, I am going to make sure you never had hot water during your showers again. Do you understand me? Yeah, hold that thought while I go disable the speaker system. What? 
You can't mute me, Cinder. So there's a lot of competition between Jason and Aiko. And so like, yeah, it's like, you don't know if he's being sarcastic or if he's actually serious. But I, thought, um, but I did find, I did mark it yellow, funny. This one, Aiko does kind of have her priorities. Her priorities are kind of messed up. Um, just because, you know, she's like, um, Kai crazy. But yeah, I wanted to mention, yes, I wanted to mention that. There's <laughs> another thing I wanted to mention. So I also wanted to mention that I completely forgot that Dr. Erlen first, which is kind of obvious that he would have a different name. I forgot he had a different name on Luna. But, I, but, but what I actually, the main thing that I forgot is the fact that um, he is one of the doctors that helped with the mutations of the lunars like to make them into like wolves i completely forgot that he was a like, part of that and that he helped do that we also got to the part where we find out well it's revealed and dr erlen figures out that crest is his daughter and that she wasn't killed <laughs> i'm gonna do two more things uh, okay so one of the main things that I wanted to mention was this one scene because I just find it so funny because everyone is literally so confused. So it's a scene where Cress is being held by a wolf because he just woke up from like um, his medic, I guess medically induced coma, not, med not a coma, but they had like, they, they, they had him asleep using drugs because he was like really like injured. He's, so he's just waking up with it and then the first thing he sees is is crust and he's like has a, a lot of questions he doesn't know where he is he's kind of um disoriented so that, so yeah so wolf's is disoriented crest um jason is also in the room dr erlin is in the room crest doesn't know most of these people she doesn't recognize wolf and then um all of a sudden she hears her name and is thorn coming to the rescue and so Thorn is obviously still blind. Oh yeah. So when Cress when Cress sees Thorn for the first time again, the first thing she says is, Captain, to your left there's a lunar guard, and on your right is a doctor who's running tests on lunars, and I'm being held by one of Lavana's wolf hybrids, and please be careful. So then Thorn is like, you know, like on his guard, like, what is happening? What's going on here? And but then Wolf Wolf keeps like saying his name. He's like Thorn, um, but Thorn obviously can't see, so um, he's not sure who's talking to him. But then eventually he figures out that it's Wolf. He's like, "Wait, Wolf?" And he's like, "Yes." Um, there was a long, long pause before understanding so Thorn's expression, and he laughed. Aces, Chris, you nearly gave me a heart attack with the with that wolf hybrid comment why didn't you tell me it was just him so yeah uh that's one of my favorite one of my favorite scenes in this book because just because of the fact that everyone is literally so confused um oh yeah because like crisis and almost people in the room the one is blind wolf is disoriented so yeah i just like everyone is kind of like what, what is happening Oh yeah, um, Jason doesn't really know what's going on either because this is the first time he's seeing Cress. Um, after the whole like battle <laughs> on um, the Rampion. So yeah. Oh yeah, and Erlen has just he just like got up probably being knocked out by Cress. So everyone's just like a hot mess. Everyone's confused. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to mention that scene because uh, I love that scene because I just find it so funny. But yep, yeah, so I am now on chapter 41. I'm on page 359. Oh, I don't think I'm going to read any more tonight. But if I do, let you guys know, I probably won't. And if I do, I'll probably update again like tomorrow. Hey guys, so I just, first off, it's Saturday, August 29th, 6.35 p.m. And I just wanted to come to do another update on Crest um, before all the real action and like the last before before like the main action and the main plan 
starts taking place and and the plot like picks up like speeds up um okay so what i read today is they're still in africa and they know now that the military is, military is gonna come looking for them because they know about the satellite that crashed which had crest and thorn in and people have spotted thorn in another village in africa so they were just nearby so and the rampant is pretty noticeable so they're um getting ready to leave they're packing up I'm about to get into to leave but then they get like surrounded by a bunch of uh, commonwealth military and <laughs> that scene was actually really funny just because they some of them leave right and then they're like oh crap there's like all this military and they're like cinder come out with your hands up or whatever and while cinder is like surrendering um she's like walking slowly and like some of them are like laying on the ground and they're still trying to make a plan on how to escape from from it at one point cinder asked jason can you control any of them so like any of the military people because you know he's lunar and he's like yeah right and she says and then she, um it says she could practically hear his eyes roll i'm like same oh and then thorn is like oh because um, jason is like the only way out through this is to fight and thorn is like in that case does anyone see my gun and jason's like i've got it and thorn is like can i have it back and she's like nope <laughs> and then like the main like military guy is like i order you to stop talking <laughs> because they're literally trying to make a plan while they're like like it's all kind of like obvious like they're gonna there's no way out of it but they're still trying to make a plan on how to get out of it but long story short they do um the people in that um town help them the lunars and the earthens <laughs> so they're able to get out and then they go back on the rampion and that's when they come up with their plan to kidnap kai aiko's personality chip is put into the android and the android not the android the escort droid um then what was her name darla her personality chip personality chip is put into the rampion so yeah so i'm now up to the part where um thorn not thorn um wolf and crest are getting ready to go to the wedding so they can uh, hack um break in and like not break in because they have invitations to to the wedding that they stole <laughs> but um they yes yeah, so they're getting ready so they could go in and um crest's mission is to disable the security system so the rest of them could get in and they, um, the rest of them are trying to get in through the secret tunnels the escape tunnels so yeah that's the part i'm up to and i'm gonna keep reading and i'll update you guys as i'm reading um because this is when everything really starts picking up and because you know the whole plan is being is about to be executed so let's keep reading hmm. Okay, so I just got to the part where um, finally Kai and Cinder are face to face again and their interaction again is so freaking awkward. Like Cinder is just like, she, this, this whole spiel about all the people that she had to like hurt in a certain way to get to Kai. Um, but, she, but I swear they'll all be fine. Um, but then... And they're in uh, one of Kai's room and he has Cinder's foot the one that fell off on the, uh, the steps in the first book and Cinder notices and he realizes that, he, that she saw it that he has it and he's like um, first off he's like his ears grew hot and he felt as if he'd just been caught hoarding something strange and overly intimate. Something that didn't belong to him. And then his response is just, You, uh... He gestured half-heartedly. 
you drop that. I'm like, this, this interaction is so awkward. Like, that's like the best fake explanation or response he had for keeping her cyborg foot. I just thought that was funny. Anyways, gonna gonna get back to this. Okay, I just wanted to mention, I just started this chapter, right? And, okay, first off, um, Erlen, he just realized he has lenomosis. He tested um, Thorn, he doesn't have it. Um, so, Erlen, he's quarantining himself, and first of all, yeah. so yeah, he's, he's gonna quarantine himself because he has lenomosis. But he's got to this chapter, and Crest and Wolf are trying to meet up with uh, Cinder and Aiko again. Uh, well, they're trying to get to the their meeting place where they supposed to meet up. And then Crest is like, she literally is the first thing is, she was glad that Wolf seemed to have memorized the palace blueprint better than she had because with all this running up and down the um running up and down the stairwells, around corners and down corridors, Crest was completely lost. But then. So like, um, Wolf is like leading them. So she's like, oh, he memorized the blueprint. He knows exactly where he's going. But then they bump into Cinder and Aiko and they're like, oh, perfect timing. And then they, Aiko and Cinder have, have Kai with them unconscious. And Wolf is like, I thought that was his cologne. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's how he was able to like find them. He was just sniffing out Kai's cologne and that's how he was able to know where they were because yeah at first i was like oh yeah like well if he he memorized the blueprint no he was just sniffing them out yeah <laughs> but that was funny so hey guys so it is still saturday august 29 10 55 p.m Ooh. and i am pleased to tell you that i have finished christ by marissa meyer i actually finished it at nine but I just wanted to collect all my thoughts and feelings before I finish, before I wrapped up this vlog. Okay, so I know I did mention that Dr. Erlen figured out that he had lenomosis, but before that happened, it was a really funny scene with Thorne and Erlen. It's before um, he finds out he has lenomosis and he's like doing the procedure to. Um, to create the drops so that Thorne can get his sight back. Um, Erlen is like, are you nervous? Some more stuff happened, but he's like, are you Erlen is like, are you nervous? And Thorne is like, yes, terribly so, yes. And I'm just gonna read the actual line because it says the doctor snorted, just like you, to finally show a bit of humanity beneath that arrogance and of course, it's only concern for yourself. I'm hardly surprised. And then he goes on to, um, like later on, he says, You do not deserve her, you know, the doctor said, with a new edge to his tone. Um, I hope she comes to her senses soon, senses soon, because I see how she looks at you, and I do not care for it, not one bit. Um, so basically, Thor doesn't know yet that Crest is Erlen's daughter, and he's basically just Erlen is basically just saying like, I don't approve approve of you. Um, like he knows that Crest like has feelings for Thorn, and he doesn't think that Thorn is like a good match for Crest. Um, so he's just telling, telling, telling him how how, how he feels, um, and that he doesn't deserve to be with Crest. I was like, dang, tell me how you really feel. Oh, this is one line Lavana said that really annoyed me. She's like, please do, please do send word immediately as to the safety of my groom. I will be in fits until I know he is well. And I'm like, I literally roll, rolls eyes. I'm like, she's so annoying. Okay, so I also highlighted um, the part where Crest finds out that Erlen is her father and she also finds simultaneously he has lenomosis and then you know he's gonna die. But she doesn't know how to like react to it because he um like and they also had to leave because you know they just kidnapped Kai and they have to like escape. Um and they're basically like oh Cinder's like pretty 
pretty much like, oh, I'm sorry, but you know, we have to go. And Erlen says, tells her that he loves her, but she can't say it back because she doesn't really know him. Then we have the whole battle scene on um, on the roof when they're trying to escape because the thaumaturges are the ones that are up, they're up on the roof. And I just hide, um, in that battle scene, I highlighted the part um, where Cress describes everything that's going on. And Thorne says, that all sounds very dire. And then Cress is just thinking about like, um, because Eichel was hurt, um, like Wolf was like on top of Cinder and like the odds did not it did not look like they were gonna make it out of this alive. So she was thinking about like how she would die. And then that when Thorn says, I guess it's time. And then he ends up kissing her. And I just highlighted it obviously in pink <laughs> because I liked that he kept his promise. Because if you remember from the, um, when they were still in the desert, Cress was worried that she was going to die without ever being kissed and then he told her I promise you I won't let that happen um so yeah he was like I'm not gonna let that happen so that's why I highlighted that also in one of the green I feel like this is like a line that like a lot of people that circulates a lot and that is um when Thorne says Cress do me a favor and he's and then he says uh, make sure I don't shoot anyone we like and then there's like a fan art image that somebody made of that scene where of this scene where Thorne is blindfolded and Cress has Thorne has the gun and he Cress is helping him um points at you know the bad guys and just shooting the bad guys and not you know anybody in their group. Okay, I can't find the one that I was thinking about but I did find another one from a different artist. But it's basically that picture. Like a lot of people like to fan art of. Okay, so one of like the major like oranges plot, um, major like plot points that we find out, like a really big reveal, which when I first read this <laughs> reveal, I was completely shocked. And I was like, wow, that's insane. And it's just this scene that Dr. Erlen has with Lavana and um, that he finally came, he realized that because he like figured out what like year wise that he, not Lavana herself, but like I think it was, okay, I'm just gonna read what it says. So he goes, This disease is all you're doing. You've manufactured death to bring earth to its knees so that when it so when the time was right you would be there to save them with your your miraculous antidote antidote and that you had stashed away all along and then she said you give me too much credit it was the team working beneath my parents that created the disease and those beneath my sister who protected the antidote who perfected the antidote i simply implemented the research by determining by determining a means of getting the disease down to earth. So basically, um, the lunar royalty or whatever, they're the ones that created Lodomosis. And Lavana is the one that figured out how to get it down to earth and infect all these people. So basically, all the lunars that thought they were just escaping Luna, she implanted the um disease on them and she made it seem like they were escaping but she was really letting them go so then when they came down to earth they can infect everyone on earth and um yeah and then have the uh, the antidote when it was beneficial for them to reveal like oh we have an antidote for lidomosis it seemed like they're the heroes when they're really the ones who created this disease this disease and caused the death of millions of people like i remember reading the first time and i was just like like that's truly evil like truly evil like like the fact that 
someone would do that and literally cause the death of millions of innocent people like yeah also i got one more dark purple which means well it means when they talk about other characters they haven't been like formally introduced but the main thing i use the dark purple for is when well, this one will be similarities to rapunzel which is the this is a retelling um so i put down i just highlighted the part where Chris is like we should probably take care of those eye drops so they have the eye drops um to pour in thorn's eyes so he could get his sight back and i thought it was clever that marissa meyer had it where Cress is the one that has to put in the drops for thorn because in the rapunzel story when the prince goes blind he actually um when she cries her tears go into his eyes and that is how he regains his sight so i thought it was very clever that um Cress is the one that has to put in the drops in his eyes also it was just this whole scene with Cress and thorn like kind of talking about their feelings for each other but not really because yeah he does feel like he doesn't deserve like Cress's feelings for him he thinks that he's not good for her so and he doesn't want to hurt her <sighs> so he's like i feel like he's trying to fight back like these feelings that he has for her and trying to tell him so he doesn't have feelings for her because he doesn't think that he's good for her and then this is the whole thing of her thinking that he's heroic and him like admitting like everything that she thinks that he's done this is heroic has really been selfish and then she wants to mention like the kiss was kind of heroic for her but she doesn't mention it and then he's like oh i thought that you know the whole you saying that you loved me was just the um beaver talking and then she like thinks in her head and he was like, I know that you don't love me. That you're not in love with me. And then, like, in her mind, she thinks, she's like, she loves him more than ever. And I'm like, oh. I don't know. I also really like this line um, where she's like, because he completely does not see himself as any kind of hero. And then she just thinks to herself, now he was the Carswell Thorn who had given her strength in the desert. Who had come for her when she was kidnapped who had kissed her when hope was lost and death was imminent i don't know i just really like that line and then we have a little like funny line a little bit later which i feel like a lot of people may quote and that is a crisis it's like do you think it was destiny that brought us together and then thorn is like he squinted and after a thoughtful moment shook his head no i'm pretty sure it was cinder <laughs> Oh, and then I'm talking about, um, they do end up bringing up the kiss and he, for a second, he thinks that she thought it was a bad kiss. And then he's like, she's like, no, I didn't think it was a bad kiss. And he's like, oh, thank the stars. His head fell back against the chair because if I'd ruined that for you, I was going to feel like such a cat. And then she says, well, don't. It was every, it met every expectation. I suppose I should thank you. And I just wrote so stinking cute. <laughs> we also have a chapter with Scarlet and Winter. And in that chapter, we find out that Winter hasn't used her glamour in years. And she's starting to go a little bit mad because of it. Because that's like a side effect when a little one doesn't use her gift. And she also saved Scarlet from being killed um, when she was being interrogated by Lavana. But that was like a little bit earlier on in the book. Also, we have a moment um, with Cinder and Kai talking. And they kind of like just clear the air about everything. He finds out that she has never used her glamour on him. And that everything that he's felt for her was real. And then they finally kiss like two books later. So I literally wrote... Okay, so um, the line is... Then he... Then he slid his arms around her waist and kissed her and I wrote finally okay i think that's all okay i'm just gonna talk about a little bit like what i like really love about this book one is the fact 
um, that all these characters are so completely different from each other. They all have lived like these completely different lives and they all have experienced, experienced different things. But like when they come together, it just makes sense. They're, they like, I don't know. It's just like these group of people, they like, like them working together, it just works. And they each have like, a, each have a skill set that helps, that helps out um, in their mission and what they're trying to do. That's one of the things I love about this, about this book. And of course, Carson Thorne. So freaking adorable. I think that's all I really have to say. I rated this, again, five stars. I didn't like it as much. I didn't enjoy it as much as I did the first time. I think it's just because, you know, all the plot twists and reveals, I already knew. So it wasn't shocking to me. So I didn't have the same experience. I just been like, oh my God, like, um, but I still really enjoyed my reread of this. And I'm super excited to get to winter next month in September, which is in a few days. So yeah. Um, so that wraps up my crest spoiler vlog and look forward to my to my last one winter so yeah so if you like this video please give it a like so i can know what kind of videos to post on here so my camera overheated um but i just want to finish this outro i don't want i don't want to refer it to cool so what i was saying was um please subscribe to the channel if you will like <laughs> So you can become a member of a little family here on Jerry Hart's books. And I'll catch you guys here next time. Bye.